Hey folks, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. Today I'm answering a question that someone asked about how I made those modified sun and stones for honing blind hole cylinders on outboard motors, right? Outboard motors. So don't forget my used outboard motor buying guides for sale on Amazon for $20. It, for a limited time, if you send me an email at Keith at Outboard Dad with proof of purchase, I'm offering a free half-hour session over the phone, a $250 value to help you with a motor or a boat you're looking to purchase or a motor that you're working on. So let's answer that question about those modified stones and how I made them. I took instruction from a gentleman that had been doing this many more years than me, and this is a typical honing stone. Right, so this is a 100 grit coning stone. You can do it with 200 or 300, you don't have to do it with the 100 grit. But as you see, we have a stone across the whole surface and this rotates in the tool to shave off or hone the cylinder and it can be used for boring as well. If you remember in my videos for the Evan Rude Johnson rebuild that I'm doing, that one shows me doing it dry with the 100 grit because we remove a lot of material to get all the scratches out and then I go in with the finer stones when we get close. So this is the, the stone that I modified. Simply all I did was I chipped off, I actually took a little cut off wheel and I ground it right through here so I had it left over and then I ground another spot and then another spot and then I chipped those off. I did come in with my cut off wheel at an angle to chip that off and ended up chipping the whole thing off, right? All of those pieces. So I had these one, two, three, four pieces. The one that was left, I took some JB Weld and put it on there and welded that on there. And then I cut a piece of wood. This was just a piece of teak wood. Teak wood is kind of hard, uh, dense wood. You could use pine if you want. I just kind of figured the pine wood or the uh, teak wood would wear a little slower and I'm not worried about wearing fast. I want to have even wear. And then I just put a straight edge against this until I got it even and straight. So that, remember the idea behind this. When we have a blind hole cylinder, we can't run our stones all the way through and come out the other side. Let me show you. So if I have a cylinder like this and I'm running my stones in there as they're rotating, right? And I can pass through that cylinder and then I can pass up top evenly. Now my stone and my cylinder are gonna wear evenly. If I'm going in and out and it's a blind hole, I have to stop and I keep going in and out and in and out. What's gonna happen is, is this part of the stone down here is gonna wear faster than this part. Makes sense, right? So now we're gonna end up with a little angle and we're gonna end up with a cylinder that has a V in it. And we don't wanna have that tapered cylinder, we want a straight cylinder. So what I do is I hone first with the 100 grit stones in and out, and then I'll flip them over in the tool and run it in reverse so that I'm not, so I'm kinda of wearing my stones a little more even until I get all those scratches and nastiness out of it. And then I'll get it close to where it needs to be, within maybe four or five thousandths. Then, then I'll put this stone in and just work the bottom of the cylinder because I'm already starting to taper a little bit. If I'm four or five thousandths out of round up top or within the destination, let's say I need to go 20 thousandths and I've gone 15, 16 thousandths, at the bottom I'm probably gonna be at 18 thousandths, so I need to wear more at the bottom. So now I'm gonna go in with, the, with this stone and get the bottom cut closer to where I need to be within that four thousandths, four and a half thousandths clearance that we're looking for on this particular motor, depending on what you're working on, and then I get it close. Then I'm going to come back with these stones. Now when I'm working that cylinder in and out and I'm, I have to stop, the bottom is already cut a little, slightly larger. So now I'm going to even out and match the top of the cylinder with the bottom of the cylinder. Again, I'm doing this carefully, measuring each time. Watch my videos with Johnson Evinrude uh, 130 horse looper engine rebuild. I think I'm 21 videos into that right now. It's almost complete. As you see, we've almost got it assembled and back together. We just got to do some carburetors and some finishing touching for the touches for the electrical. And then we'll be ready to fire that motor up so you can watch it happen in upcoming videos. 
So I hope that answers your question. If you have any other questions, at the end, once we get that cylinder, probably within one thousandth of an inch of where we need to be, and we're straight top to bottom, then I'm going to go ahead, I'm actually doing a little larger in the bottom with my modified stone. So if I'm at four thousandths up here, I'm probably at five thousandths at the bottom of it. Then I go in with the 200 grit, and that straightens it more. Then I go in with the 300 grit. Now I've got a nice cross hatch in there. I've brought the, the top of the cylinder to meet the bottom of the cylinder, and now I have a nice straight cylinder. Now if you look in the book, they give you some parameters that you can go by that you can be slightly tapered. Let's see what the book says. So 90 degree V4 engines, we can be out of round four thousandths of an inch. Hmm, that's a lot. I made this one straight. You can tell by the videos that you see. I'm maybe within a quarter of a thousandths from top to bottom. I don't want to be four thousandths out. That's it's out of round. When I look at the taper, it says two thousandths. So out of round, it give you a little more leeway than they do with taper. But I want to be within a quarter of a thousandths. I don't want to be, but we're way within spec from what the manufacturer says. So keep that in mind when you're doing your rebuilds. I know a couple guys are working on their rebuilds now and asking me these questions, so please keep me posted. Send me videos to keithatoutboarddad.com so that I can include them and show people what you're doing with your rebuild and let me know how it's going along the way because there's nothing like rebuilding your own motor, getting out on the water with your own motor and enjoying it for years to come and having that longevity and that confidence in your motor. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. Keep in mind that I do boat evaluations if you're in New Jersey. Even if you're out of state, uh, I do boat evaluations. If you're looking to buy a boat, let me know what you're looking at. You can certainly use my used outboard motor buying guide, but I do come out and do boat evaluations if you're not mechanical and you don't want to do that yourself. And you can reach out to me at keithatoutboarddad.com. Also seminars, I'm starting a seminar series. Started with Raritan Yacht Club and did them a couple weeks ago and we'll be doing some down in South Jersey as well. So let me know if you Marina wants to, me to come in and teach on boat maintenance, boat safety, and how to take care of your outboard motor and the things you need to do to stay out on the water and have fun this summer. It's springtime and it's coming soon. Can't wait to get out on the water. Can't wait to see you out on the water having fun. Have a great night.